Welcome facilitators. Um, this presentation um, is going to be about 30 to 40 minutes um, and it's going to be about how to um, strengthen our skills as facilitators. Um, and I wanted to mention that this presentation is both for Cosecha and for the INE Institute. Um, the INE Institute does movement building trainings across the country um, and a lot of Cosecha's um, decentralized structure um, and roles within the circles comes from the theory of INE. So in this presentation, we're going to review what a facilitator does, um, what are their responsibilities and their particular role within the circle, um, and some things to keep in mind um, while doing this role. So let's get started. So the facilitator is one of four main roles that any circle within Cosecha has. Um, and remember that the circle is um, your first level of organization within Cosecha. And each circle has a specific function or purpose um, that is helping the village move towards its next step. Um, and these roles help the circle be able to work well according to this purpose or function. Um, and the purpose is that, you know, the, the circle can function well without one person having to do everything or um, come in and take over all of the needs. Um, the facilitator, like all the roles in Cosecha, is about support, um, about all the different ways that the facilitator can help the circle work well. Um, and we're going to talk about this in a second, but one of the main things to remember is that as facilitator, it is so important to hold your role, that without a facilitator, and without any of the roles in the circle, um, the circle really cannot function well. Um, so circles together, um, three to five circles form a community, um, and communities can grow um, with more circles to up to 150 people to form a village. Um, so circles are always in communication and always working um, very closely together. Um, and like I said, each circle has a specific function um, according to the goal of the village. So let's say that a village has decided that its next step is to hold a training of 100, 100 people. Um, you could have a trainer circle, which is a circle of people who are learning the training modules and are preparing themselves to become the trainers in the next training. You could have a recruitment circle, um, which is focusing on, on how to get 100 people to that training. Um, you can have a logistic circle, etc. cetera. Um, and so I know that um, uh, people are in different stages of forming circles. Some folks out there might already be part of villages where there are two, three, four, five circles. Um, and other people might just be starting a Kosecha village in their city. So you might just have one circle, um, which in this case would be a cedar circle that's working on bringing the very first training of Kosecha to their city. But whatever circle you have, um, you'll always have those four principal roles. So there are five golden rules um, to keep in mind um, about each role. The first one is to hold your role. So for this structure to work, um, the structure of circles and communities and villages, it's very important for each person to hold their role. That if you commit to doing this work, that you follow through so that nothing falls through the cracks and so that the, the circle can really function well. The second role is that all roles are flexible. So you can always change your role or ask someone else to come in um, and fill your role if you're unable to. Um, people can exchange roles or ask people to come into those roles as long as the person coming into your role is really able to hold that role and hold it well. Um, and the third role is that we grow through apprenticeship. So whenever someone comes into your role, it's very important that they be prepared to take on the responsibilities of your role. Um, and we know that every role requires preparation. That's why we're holding these um, webinars for folks. Um, and that's why we really encourage people to become each other's apprentice so that they can learn from each other and eventually learn how to take on any role that's necessary within the circle. Um, the fourth uh, golden rule is roles before people. And what we mean by this is that in Cosecha, before you're an individual, you always have a relationship to a village or to a circle. So when people are making commitments to the village, it's making a commitment through the role that they're holding. 
So you might have, um, like people might switch according to what people's needs are or what's going on in their lives, but the roles are always going to maintain, um, to, or the, the roles are always going to remain constant. Um, and then the fifth really important role is that all roles are about support. So no roles are about, you know, one person making all the decisions or about managing or directing other people, that all the roles in the circle are different ways that people support the functioning of the entire circle as a whole. So um, what does a facilitator do? Um, the basic role of a facilitator is to help the group make decisions. Um, that is the overall description of what a facilitator's specific role is within the circle. So this doesn't mean um, that the facilitator is the person that makes all the decisions or picks the person who's going to make the decisions. What the facilitator does is he or she creates the space and guides the conversation so that everyone in the circle can come to decisions together in a way that people feel most comfortable with. So the first um, part of being a facilitator is that in order to help the circle um, make a decision, the first thing that the facilitator has to do is help the circle decide, well, what are the questions to begin with? What is it that the circle needs to decide to do? Um, so the facilitator um, can do this by helping the circle brainstorm what the questions or decisions that need to be made are. Um, when people start throwing out um, ideas for what are the questions or decisions that need to be made, the facilitator can then help kind of clarify certain questions or maybe combine two or three questions that go together and start to put these questions in an order that makes most sense. Um, and then the facilitator can help the, the circle decide on what are the priority decisions or priority questions. So let's say, for example, um, we are part of a village um, that's decided that the village wants to put on a training of 100 people. They want to get 100 new people into Cosecha in their city. Um, and that we're part of um, the uh, recruitment circle. So our job is to figure out how to get those 100 people to the training. And we have our first meeting. The facilitator, um, could first ask the group, okay, you know, our function is to get 100 in people to the training, um, to, this, to this new training. You know, what are the things that we need to decide on? What are, what are the different types of decisions that we need to make as a circle? And that's a great way to get started as a facilitator. So some um, phrases that could be helpful in um, facilitating a conversation like this are, for example, I feel like the main decisions we have to make today are, etc. what do you guys think? Or I feel like these two questions that you put forward or these two ideas that you put forward go together. Does that make sense? Or of all the key points that you guys mentioned that we should discuss today, what are our two to three priorities? Um, or the last example is what I'm hearing is that the circle thinks that we first need to decide how many people we need to invite in order to reach our goal of getting 100 people actually to the training. Does this sound right? So different ways that facilitators um, can um, frame the conversation, ask questions, put out proposals that help the circle um, move forward in making decisions. So part of identifying what decisions um, the circle needs to take, it's, can, um, it's also helpful, um, the facilitator can help the circle clarify what their needs are as a circle. So um, the facilitator can help the circle identify what the circle needs to do or what the circle needs in order to fulfill its function. Um, and the facilitator can help determine um, what can help the circle decide what the vehicles of those needs are. So what does the circle um, need to do in order to meet those needs? So let's say that the circle decided that to, um, we'll continue on with this example of the recruitment circle. Let's say that the circle decided that in order to recruit 100 people to this training, they first need to just invite 
400 people in general, that they set that as, okay, that's the first decision that we made as a circle. Um, so the next um, set of questions that the facilitator could ask the circle is, okay, if our need is to invite 400 people, um, what do we need to do to invite 400 people? How do we as a circle invite 400 people? Um, so in this way, the facilitator is helping the circle determine what the vehicles of that need are. So some helpful phrases here um, include, okay, since our goal um, is to get 100 people to this training, um, what do we as a circle need to do, which is what I just mentioned, or what is the best way for our circle to invite 400 people? And in this way, the facilitator keeps pushing the circle forward in, in making these series of decisions. When the circle is trying to come to decisions, um, for example, how to invite 400 people to a training, um, various ideas and opinions can pop up. So the facilitator's, um, the facilitator's other responsibility is to help the circle come to a final decision um, as a circle. Um, so the facilitator helps move forward the conversation so that the circle can decide on a final decision. Um, and then based on the opinions of the circle, the various ideas that are popping up, um, the facilitator can actually offer a proposal for a decision and then ask for a consensus. Um, so the facilitator is always listening to um, what is going on in the circle to then try to bring the circle together for a final decision. So let's say that in the circle, um, you know, some people are saying, well, to invite 400 people, um, we want to do outreach to the churches. Like the churches have a lot of people, we want to go there, we want to invite people after mass and hand out flyers, great. Um, but others say, no, I think what we need to do is we need to go to, on the weekends, we need to go to the shops where people are doing their weekend shopping or to the laundromats where people are doing their laundry and be, recruit, be recruiting people there. And other people in the circle saying, well, actually, I think the best way is to really reach into like our own networks, who are friends, who are families, um, and really get lists of, of who, um, who individually we can each invite. Um, so the facilitator would take all of those ideas and put them up on a paper and say, okay, we have all these ideas. So you know, are there some, are there top two ideas or should we all um, take on different one of these ideas and so get recruitment from all different angles, um, but really be able to listen to all those ideas to, to come to a final decision. So some um, helpful phrases here are, you know, what I'm hearing from everyone is that we should do such and such thing. Does that sound right to you guys? Or we have about 10 minutes left for this part of the agenda. I feel like the decision we're coming to is, et cetera. Do, how does that sound to folks? And so that way they are um, listening to what people are saying and making proposals based off what people are saying and then asking for, asking if people feel comfortable with that proposal. Um, so the main responsibility of a facilitator, the way that facilitators um, help guide these conversations and help the group make decisions, um, first and foremost is by preparing the agenda and then helping to guide the group, um, guide the circle through the agenda. So what does it mean to prepare an agenda? First is thinking about, okay, what are the decisions or what are the tasks that the circle needs to do in this meeting? Um, so it's good to think beforehand about all of the things that the circle needs to do um, for the meeting that's coming up. So what are the decisions the circle needs to take? Um, what are the circle's next steps um, that they need to come to an agreement on? What are the different tasks that need to be um, distributed among everybody? Um, and to do this, it's a really good idea to go over the notes in the agenda from the previous meeting. Um, and you can always ask people, other members of the circle or coaches um, or people in other circles for support in putting together an agenda. Um, it's also really helpful to, at the beginning of each meeting, go over the agenda that you put together to see if everyone is in agreement or if people would add things or move things off to another, to a, another time if it's not priority. Just make sure that everyone is okay with the agenda before you get started. So the second question is, okay, 
how much time do we have? So how much time is the meeting going to take in general? Are we here for an hour? Are we here for two hours? And so based on that, um, based on that total time, how much is each agenda point going to take? And really setting times for each point. Um, and the third point is who from the circle is the best person to talk about each agenda point? And that might be you as the facilitator, and that makes total sense, but let's say that there is an agenda point about how to outreach to churches. And someone in the group um, is the one who proposed that you do outreach to churches and is most connected to the churches. It might make sense that that person um, actually be the person to speak about that point in the agenda. Um, and you can reach out to those people um, beforehand, before the meeting, to make sure that they are prepared and feel comfortable with speaking about that point in the agenda. Um, so I really think from my experience as a facilitator that preparing an agenda is really, um, it's really something that takes a lot of thought and a lot of work. It can, and it, it can really be a true art form because the agenda is what guides the entire meeting and really organizes and structures um, the whole um, flow and outcome of the meeting. And with a good agenda, the meeting can really move forward in a very fluid way and you can come out of that meeting feel like, feeling like you did a lot. Um, and um, two tips for people is that it's a good idea to um, write up the agenda on a big piece of paper um, so that everyone can follow along the agenda. And then when the group has made key decisions, you can actually write those decisions next to the agenda point um, up on that main paper. Um, and this actually makes the uh, messenger's job very easy because the messenger who's taking notes um, and is recording these main decisions for everyone in the group can follow along on that big paper. Um, also, my second tip is that if things come up during the meeting that aren't part of your agenda but might be good to speak to, to, to speak about at the next meeting or at another point, you can write them in either what's called a parking lot or just kind of like a little um, kind of list of things to save for another time. And that way, um, you're, you're not having to address them at the moment, but you're also not forgetting about them. Um, and the second key responsibility of the facilitator is to ensure that everyone in the circle is participating. So since the facilitator is the one guiding the conversation, um, the facilitator should also be paying attention to who's speaking more and who's speaking less, and make sure that decisions are really including the opinions of everybody in the circle. So facilitating is not easy. It is, I consider it to be um, um, a very complex and very dynamic skill to, um, to practice. Um, and part of the reason why that it can be complicated is that you have to um, manage a lot of dynamics at the same time. So you have the issue of time, you need to get things done in a timely way, you need to move forward with the agenda, um, there can be disagreements um, or various different opinions coming from the group. Sometimes there are decisions that aren't easy to make, that there are decisions where the solution isn't so easy to, to come across. Um, so as a facilitator, you're always um, keeping in mind all of these dynamics, and I think that's why it's, it's such a complex role. Um, so the most important thing as a facilitator is to really be able to listen well. Um, and to listen to what's going on in the circle and what's going on with the members of the circle, whether it's different opinions, um, different perspectives, um, emotions that are coming up in the conversation, um, difficulties that can come up for people. So the, again, the, 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 the job of the facilitator <coughs> is not to make decisions for the circle, um, when things become hard, but rather identify and name what those hard parts are. Be able to name what the differences in opinions are or name what the difficulties are that are coming up and ask the circle to think through those difficulties. Um, and sometimes it, uh, it requires that the facilitator actually put forth a solution or a proposal for how to face those difficulties or move forward from those difficulties and then asking for consensus from the group. Um, so, for example, you know, continuing along with this example of the recruitment circle for a 100-person training, um, uh, 
um, let's say that some of the members of the circle are saying that it's been really hard to recruit people um, and they only have a, you know, they've each only recruited like three, four people and they feel like it's not enough. Um, so something that the facilitator can say is, you know, okay, I, I hear from various people that a difficulty, that people are having difficulty in, in recruiting people. Um, so let's think a little bit, let's, let's stop, you know, what we're doing and let's think a little bit about why that's been difficult and how, um, we can kind of change our strategies maybe to, um, to, to meet this need that we're trying to do and to be more successful in recruiting people. You know, what, what's going on? What are the factors? Let's talk about this. Um, and sometimes these concerns or <laughs> difficulties that come up. Um, aren't always, don't always fit nicely in, into the agenda. Um, and it can sometimes be important to change the agenda a bit to really be able to, um, to talk about these, these concerns. Um, so for example, I was facilitating a part of a conversation, a part of a, a circle meeting um, a few weeks ago um, where the circle was preparing for their first training. And the circle members um, were feeling a little bit shaky and someone said, actually, something that we've been talking about is that we want the volunteer organizers within Kosecha. Um, so not, not us as circle members, but you guys as volunteer organizers to put on this first training that you guys know a lot more and um, you're just more prepared. Um, so this wasn't something that was in the agenda. Um, the agenda was to, you know, get people going on their modules and preparing for the modules and to just move forward. Um, but it was a really significant concern, and I think that the concern spoke to feeling unprepared, um, feeling like they weren't the best ones to speak about Cosecha, um, and so I had to stop the conversation and take about 15 minutes to really address those concerns and explain why it's so important, um, why the uh, volunteer organizers are here more for support um, rather than to do the whole training and why it's so important that for a decentralized structure to work that circle members be trained to actually be the trainers um, and that took about 20 minutes out of our agenda but that's fine that that was we had to slow down at that point in order to move forward in a more successful way um, and so when that happens, that's fine. Sometimes it's important as facilitator to be flexible and to be thinking about what are the needs of the, of the circle in that moment. So at the same time, um, the facilitator is also needs to balance kind of those needs to really slow down and listen um, with a need to, to keep moving forward in the agenda. Um, so if the conversation of the circle starts to kind of go off course a little bit, or people aren't talking about the, you know, what's most relevant to the priorities of the circle, um, the facilitator needs to be able to return this, the circle back to its, its focus and its priority. So, and, and sometimes they are talking about important points, um, but maybe that don't need to be addressed at this very moment. So the facilitator should, should um, think about dedicating another time, either at the end of the agenda or the next meeting or whenever makes the most sense to talk about what they're bringing up in order to really be able to address the agenda um, at hand. Um, and the coordinator can be very helpful here um, in moving things forward. Um, if you have times attached to each part of the agenda, you can ask the coordinator to help you keep time. So you can say, you know, okay, the, the first point, we're going to spend 10 minutes on it. You know, coordinator, please give me 10 minutes on your timer and make sure that we move, move forward at the end of 10 minutes. So um, the facilitator and the coordinator can work together in this way um, and help you start on time and end on time, of course. Um, so this whole time we've been saying that the facilitator is not the one who's making decisions um, in the group, but is actually, is more so kind of helping the, the group come to these decisions. Um, and that is true, but it's also important in certain key moments for the facilitator to be decisive and to really be able to um, guide people forward in, 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 in a decisive way. Um, so the facilitator really needs to have clarity on what the circle needs to do that day and what are the priorities for the circle in that meeting. So if you feel like, like it really makes the most sense to move on with the agenda and it's urgent to make a, a final decision and that there's been enough conversation and, and, and people are ready for that, then say that and do it um, and really show, like really move, move the circle forward in that way. 
Um, so, and, and it's, I think in this way, the facilitator is always looking for a balance between flexibility and um, a real leading presence um, in the circle. Um, that the facilitator is opening up the space for the circle to be able to make decisions, but also needs to um, have a strong enough presence in order to be able to maintain that space. Um, that a facilitator isn't helping the circle if the facilitator is just letting the conversation go and go and go, and the facilitator is just, you know, sitting on the table with their hands crossed. That you need to be able to let all the opinions come to the surface, but also um, be able to hold that meeting space and hold the agenda um, strong enough. Um, so let's say that the same, um, you know, this, this recruitment circle um, is talking about how to recruit in churches and they start a conversation about, you know, different experiences with different pastors and priests and how priests can be really difficult to work with, um, which are all, you know, like really, um, which are all things that, that are going through people's minds and that's fine. Um, but you as a facilitator in that case could say, you know, okay, I understand that people have had different experiences with the churches and that might um, affect um, what churches we reach out to, but let's stay focused on how to do recruitment in those churches um, and talk about our difficult experiences with the priests kind of in another moment. So ways to um, gently but firmly kind of refocus the circle in, in, in ways that actually help the circle. Um, move forward with our decisions. Um, another thing to keep in mind is um, power dynamics that can come up in the circles. Um, so when we're working in groups that have um, different power dynamics when it comes to um, gender or ethnicity or race or language that's spoken, um, these differences can influence um, to various degrees um, who are the people that are making the most decisions in the circle or who are the most vocal or who speak with most authority that people listen to most in the circle. Um, so a lot of times it is um, men or white people or um, um, or mestizos rather than indigenous people, um, or people who are speaking, um, you know, Spanish rather than an indigenous language that um, may feel the most comfortable um, making decisions, or that they're the ones who are being the most heard, that their voices are being um, the most heard, or that they, they feel like they can speak with more authority because of their experiences with those different types of privileges. Um, so as a facilitator, it's important to be keeping in mind those dynamics of, you know, who's speaking up more, who's, who's kind of taking up more space, and who is not speaking up as much, and really encouraging the people who are not speaking up as much um, to give their opinions and their feedback by, by asking them, you know, what do you think? What's going on? What are your decisions? Like, what do you think is the best, is the best thing to do here? Um, and these, you know, these factors... Um, it's like in any space we're in, these factors are always at play, and while at the same time there's always so many factors at play. So um, again, as facilitator, you're always trying to kind of hold these, these messy dynamics. Um, and sometimes um, I know that when we're in, when we feel in a hurry to make decisions, um, it can be hard to, to slow down and try to make room for everybody and really hear everyone out. Um, but it can be very important to do in these instances and really take the time to listen and, and um, give people the space for their own thinking process to work. Because um, if, if they need more time to think or they need more time to, to kind of give an opinion or think through what their, what their thought is. And the last tip that I would say, or the last thing to keep in mind is as a facilitator, be very conscious of your own energy. Be aware of what energy you're bringing to the group. Um, because since you are helping um, guide the conversation of a group and you're the one who's put the agenda together, your energy can actually greatly affect the energy of the circle in ways that sometimes it might be um, hard to notice. Um, so I know that in my experience, if I have um, brought a lot of like um, stress kind of energy to the circle that that can really be felt and it has an impact impact on how other people in the circle feel um, or if I'm unsure or not totally convinced of what I'm saying the other people in the circle can really feel that and that that can affect the circles process um, so more um, 
more calmness and sincerity um, and honesty that you can bring and clarity that you can bring to the circle as a facilitator, the more calm and clear and, and sincere the people um, in the circle will be. And also just being aware of what energy, kind of what mood is needed at different moments. So um, if it's a serious decision or if, if you're facilitating kind of a, an emotional piece of um, a meeting like resonating, for example, um, then it's, you being serious and you um, being vulnerable or being emotional will open the space up for other people to, to be that same way. Or if it's a light moment and, you know, um, it's good to bring laughter into the group, then that will really affect the group. Or if it's a moment to bring gratitude or appreciation, um, you know, if you're appreciating someone in the group or, or bringing the circle back to um, a space of, of gratitude and, and, and centering itself, that will really affect how the group is. Um, so it's, it's really important to be aware of uh, the energy that's needed and what energy you're bringing. Um, so that is the end of this presentation. Um, I hope that it was helpful. Um, if you guys have any questions, further questions about what it means to be a facilitator um, or certain difficulties that you've come across, um, don't hesitate to reach out to other people in the circle, um, to the support circle if you're part of a village, um, to other facilitators, or to anyone else in the Kosecha Network. Thank you.